In my part two video on square roots of perfect squares. So once again, uh, the student will determine the positive square root of a perfect square from zero to 400 and describe the relationship between square roots and perfect squares. So squares are geometric figures. A side square creates a perfect square. For example, okay, if we have a length of one, so each side of the square has a length of one, the area is one. The length of this side is two, and therefore the area would be four. And here we have an, a length of three, and the area would be nine. So if I wanted to draw one, go ahead and draw one on yours with a length of four. Okay, so we're gonna label this four, and the area would be 16. And let's do one more with the length of five. And if this is five, you count these up and you would have 25. Okay. So perfect squares create a pattern. Which values to the right would go in the blank below? And the hint is there's more than one answer. So let's take a look. I know that 144 is 12 squared or 12 times 12. I know 169 is 13 times 13. So I'm looking for something that would give me 14 times 14 because I know 225 is 15 times 15. So I look at my choices, 14 squared, and 14 times 14 or 14 squared is 196. So I would circle those two choices. Which values to the right would go in the blank? I notice I have perfect squares. I have nine, which is the result of three times three, 16, which is four times four. So the next one would have to be 25 because I know six times six is 36. So I'm looking for something that equals 25, which is five squared. And I know I would see 25 right there. Okay, now which values to the right could go in the blank? Now, nine, 10, I'm looking for 11, but I look at my choices and I don't see 11. So I have to figure out what times what or sorry, 11 times 11 equals what number? And I know that it's 121, because 11 times 11 is 121. So the square root of 121 would be 11. All right, let's look at two more examples. Well, three more examples. Which values to the right would go in the blank? So it says 16, 17, 18. So I wanna know the square root of which of these numbers equals 18. Okay, now there's a bit of a trick here I could potentially use, okay? If you take the last number, so of, of 18, so eight, and I do eight times eight is 64, so I know that the perfect square is gonna end in a four, which would lead me to this one. Now I also know square root of 289 is 17, square root of 361 is 19, and the square root of 400 is Okay. Which values below could replace the question mark? So I know the square root of 121 is 11, square root of 144 is 12, and the square root of 96, 196 is 14. So I know that I'm missing 13. Okay, so I can circle 13. But I also know the square root of 169 is 13. And another now, the trick doesn't help me so much here because three times three is nine. So I know it ends in a nine, but this one does and this one does. So that one I actually have to know. Okay, and finally, the square root of 289 is 17. So I'm gonna make a dot on 17. Now, what I wanna show you real quickly is let's say I didn't know what the square root of 289 is. 
Okay. And I know it ends in a nine. I know three times three ends in a nine. I know seven times seven ends in a nine. So what I could do is I could go ahead and, and I want you to write this down because um, you may have to do this at some point. Okay. And I would multiply these together to see if the square root of 289 is in fact 17. Okay. So seven times seven is 49. Carry the four. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11. Drop in your 0 for your placeholder, because now I'm multiplying the tens place. 1 times 7 is 7, and 1 times 1 is 1. And I add this up. 9 plus 0 is 9, 1 plus 7 is 8, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So this would verify that the square root of 289 is, in fact, 17. Okay? That concludes our... Part two video on square roots of perfect squares. I hope you have a great day.